In today's video, I'm going to be checking out five of the best videography and cinematography courses on Skillshare. Let's get started. To take any of these courses, you can click on the link down below in the video description and this will activate an exclusive two month free trial with Skillshare that you can cancel at any time. Let's get started. In this class, I'm gonna show you how to show off with a one minute video resume. A video resume is a video designed to show off you, to show off what it is that you do in a nutshell. I'm going to show you how to do this by working with my friend Alex. She is a weaver and she needs a video resume. She wants to show off her weavings, what she does. So we're going to go to her apartment and we're going to film a video resume and you're going to see exactly how I do that. After shooting it, I'm going to take you through the whole editing process so you can just see the whole process from start to finish. The project for this class is to create a one minute video resume that people actually want to watch. All you need is anything that can record video that includes your phone, a point and shoot camera, a DSLR camera if you have one, anything at all. I can't wait to see all the work you guys make. I will be in the project gallery checking all of them out and um, good luck. My name is Ryan Booth and I am a filmmaker, cinematographer, and a director. Um, I work on a wide variety of projects, primarily documentary-based uh, projects. Sometimes it's narrative work, sometimes it's commercial work, sometimes it's actually documentaries. I got to work this last fall on one of my favorite projects, which was a full-length documentary about the spiritual process that Alejandro and Naritu went through to create the movie The Revenant. And we uh, got to spend time with cast and crew from that film and kind of really explore why they made this amazing movie. So for this class, what we're gonna talk about is how to kind of walk into a space that we've never been in before and figure out the best way to shoot that space. We'll look at the light as it kind of falls on the room. We'll talk about how to position our subject and how best to kind of take away a handful of things to make it feel like we've created this intentional world. And we're going to uh, invite one of our friends, David, who's a candle maker, and we're gonna try and build a short 60 to 90 second little mini documentary about David and the process of him making these candles. It'll provide us a great opportunity to shoot in this kind of intentional, enhanced realism documentary approach to cinematography. So my goal for you would be that at some point during the point of, your, of this project, you're looking at your screen and you go, oh my gosh, this looks like a movie. If you have that feeling, then like that is something to hang on to. We're gonna spend most of the time shooting with natural light today. We're gonna to talk about taking light away as opposed to adding a bunch of light and a handful of decisions that we can make as filmmakers that make our scenes go from feeling like a video to being this kind of cinematic moment. I'm Zach Mulligan. I'm a cinematographer working in film, television, and commercials. Today, I'd like to take you through the process of making a shot list and breaking down a script. This is something I do on any feature project I, I have, um, and I work closely with the director. Well, the role of cinematographer is, is different on different kinds of projects. Um, on commercials, it means one thing. On, uh, on feature films, it might mean slightly different. At the root of it, the cinematographer or director of photography is responsible for the look and feel of a production. The best way to illustrate this is to actually take you through uh, creating a shot list and making a scene and how it's constructed. So today we're looking at a film I shot called Opsolidia. It's uh, a project I shot in 2009 and premiered in 2010 at Sundance. It's just a wonderful little feature project that's really close to my heart. And I think it's a great project to look at. Uh, if you're just starting out, you can sort of see what you can do for, for a really limited budget. I'd like to use a short scene as an example of the visual language of the film and um, how we can break down a uh, script into shots. What I hope you get out of this class is an insight into process. There's a lot that goes into making any film or commercial or TV show, no matter what production you're on, uh, big or small. Um, we can look at one scene here, and I think that there are ideas in here that you could apply to any kind of production. So I wanna show you a feature film project I did. Uh, we'll look at one scene, look at the script and then break down the script and uh, talk, talk about how we shot it. You don't need some high-end equipment and stuff to like shoot anything. I actually don't know what settings I use. <laughs> I just kind of turn it on and it is what it is. 
I have no interest in like your know, technical aspects really. I, I don't even know what lens this is or what like specific stuff it does. It's all like emotional and like intuitive and stuff like that. I'm Matty Brown and, and I'm a filmmaker. I started making these films with the smallest, cheapest equipment. I started learning these like you know, techniques and how to tell stories with just emotion. And I'm here just to kind of explain how experimenting with stuff can really just evolve your craft. And the more you make and the more you like experiment, the more you'll become successful at what you want to do. This uh, class is called Experimenting with Short Film. Today we're going to be doing this project and trying to create an emotion with seemingly random like, images. What I'm hoping that people will you know, take away from this is that they learn to be free with their camera, harnessing the emotion of your project and shooting for that. And the third thing is to edit you creatively. And I think people should take this class solely for the reason of like forcing themselves to like think creatively on the spot. Just going and experimenting with a bunch of different shots and kind of seeing things differently. Who, who really cares if you mess up? Because no one's gonna see it but you in the editing room, you know? And who knows, maybe that like mistake will actually turn out to be something really awesome. I think the people who would benefit the most from this class are probably the people I was just like a few years ago. Like novices and people who are really trying to you know, break into it and understand it and intimidated by it. Because it is a, like a really intimidating thing. It's like you competitive. And I hope that this like inspires some people to like you go out there and just shoot everything they see, just edit everything they shoot and you know, create awesome stuff. And if it fails, I mean, that's just part of the like step upward to the next cooler thing that's gonna make them like a Vimeo staff pick or on some cool blog or whatever. I mean, because you never know who will see it in the end, you know? A anyone can take this class. You can use any kind of camera equipment you have, even just your iPhone to go out and shoot a lot of stuff because it is just a trip to the coffee shop or a trip around the block. I think the hardest part of this class that people will probably get stuck on, which I get stuck on almost every time I shoot, is finding the like inspiration. You go out and you can't find that inspiration, that theme, that thing that's gonna like pump you up. And it's just kind of getting over that hump and just keep shooting through it, keep feeling the space out, keep like understanding what's going on around you and not letting that like optimism fade. That's the most tricky part of I think any shoot really. What I would love to see people make, it's not even really seeing it, but like feeling I want to be moved. Whether it's shot well or or not, it's all about how you make people feel afterwards, which is going to be the be like the biggest like you know, piece of the whole thing. I want people to take away from this class and not just motivated but inspired to go out and like, sh shoot a bunch of stuff. Um, and so I think you should just go out and do it. My name is Drew Roberts, uh, the owner and chief pilot at Wild Rabbit Productions here in Los Angeles, California. And I'm Nathan Labruza. I am a pilot and drone technician for Wild Rabbit Productions. Wild Rabbit Productions is a company that specializes in aerial cinematography. Our main focus is for television, commercial productions, as well as feature film productions. Today we're going to be discussing the basics of aerial cinematography, going through you know, how to get into this from the ground up. We're going to be giving you tips and tricks along the way, things that we had to learn the hard way. Hopefully we can make this process a little easier for you guys. How we do what we do, from the simplest shoot to the most complicated shoot, and then we'll also be running you through kind of the post-production process as well, how to take everything that you've shot and put it together in a very interesting way. What we're wanting you guys to do as your final objective is to, to go out and film your hometown. You know, go out and find things that inspire you about where you live. Find a place that has some beautiful light and, you know, try to accentuate that with, with the different types of drone movements that we're going to teach you today. The most important thing is, is to go out and to have fun and to learn while you're using these new tools and to, to find something and to surprise yourself and to shoot something that you thought you would have never shot before. Hello, my name is
name is Isaiah Surratt. I'm a music video and commercial director in Los Angeles, California. I'd say my style is cinematic and visual with a focus on storytelling. The title of this class is Creating Music Video Treatment. And treatment writing is all about creating a document that can communicate your vision and your intentions and your story to your creative team, to bands, to ad agencies, to um, record labels, any of the folks that are needing to see you know, what you have in store. Today I'll be focusing on the written treatment which combines images and text um, in a you know, sort of complete package, you know, something that you can send off to folks and trust that your vision will be adequately conveyed. The top three things you're gonna to learn today are first, what makes a music video treatment exciting? What makes it really come off the page? Second, I'll go through some of the building blocks or chapters that you may want to include in your written treatment. And third, we'll focus on layout and image research. I think this class is great for anyone who's interested in making film and video, especially short form content. The music video form is something that's usually submitted to bands or record labels, but at the same time, you know, this is the same process I use to submit uh, commercial treatments to clients. And also, the treatment I found is really valuable to convey my vision to my crew, uh, my cinematographer, production designer, costume designer, all the key people that come together to create the vision. And this is the, the DNA, the document that actually keeps our intention cohesive during a very chaotic time.